right. Good evening, everyone. Joe Carollo again from Carollo's Corner at It's All About Scores.com with the hottest new show in South Jersey football, the Mike Wilson Show, episode six. I think this is Mike. Six or seven. Yeah, six pounds are about right. I believe it's six. Uh, anyway, we're coming to you tonight on a beautiful, nice autumn Tuesday night. It's beautiful out there, isn't it, tonight? Oh, it's very nice. It's football weather. Yes, it is. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Last Friday, uh, you guys bounced back against a pretty good Pensgrove team. Uh, tell me about the game a little bit. I'm going to tell you what I thought. I'd watch some of the film. Um, we just played better in all three phases. Defense was very good. Um, I think we held them to not even 100 yards of total offense, gave up no big plays. We played pretty good defense. Special teams was very solid. And offensively, we made some mistakes here or there, but we moved the ball much more consistently. We left some points on the field, which does not make me very happy. But uh, we just played better football all around. Yeah, I noticed that too, Mike, through, uh, watching the film. I noticed you guys moved the ball very well. The defense looked really good. I mean, I, I saw so many tackles for losses yards there was this tenacity that uh you know may have been lacking in the last couple of games most importantly i gotta ask you you know the two losses you had they were the two really good teams however you you know admittedly you guys did not play well those games you made a lot of mistakes i noticed in the last game there was two uh punt the the yes. the, 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 center, the the snapper fumbled you know threw it way over the kid's head you guys think you know, you played one better game. Will this be more consistent now? Will this be the model the rest of the year? Have you guys turned that corner when it comes to these types of mistakes and consistent mistakes, I should say? Well, I mean, as a coach, you would hope so. I mean, we focus on it in practice. We had another good day today. I think if you keep stacking good practice days and you keep stacking um, good games on the field on game day, you will become more consistent. And we have seen that. We made some changes, little minute stuff that I don't think most people even noticed the way we're doing some things structurally. And I think we're going to continue to eliminate the mistakes. I mean, we talked to the kids today in our team meeting. It was all about stopping the self-inflicted wounds because even if you go back to our two losses, right? I mean, you take those mistakes out. It's a different football game. I mean, even with Woodstown and stuff like that, I mean, overall, stats mean nothing at all. But our, our defense has played pretty well. I mean, even against Woodstown, we kept um, their stud running back to less than 100 yards rushing like right. we've been doing some good things and this past friday we finally put it all together i thought and it's still there's plenty of work to do but it's definitely a step in the right direction yeah and because i've noticed that to watch all four of your games uh just the consistency you know was a bit lacking but the, the play on the field has been good minus those mistakes which like you said and i had said last week turns the game around yes like but you know i mean i don't want to live on what ifs but i'm you know hypothetically you do one thing differently you know the whole game uh, you know, could change, could go different. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's what you're striving for. I mean, it's a long season. Uh, we just got to keep, keep keep getting better every week and stuff like that. And I'm sure some of these teams, I mean, we're all group one schools and we're all going to be in the mix. So um, we could see these guys again down the road. Absolutely. Getting into the mix, coming up this Saturday, heading down, heading your head a little bit west to uh, visit yes. the Salem Rams. What uh? What could you tell? I mean, I, I, I what could you tell us about Salem this year? I know they're young. They're they're well, like I said. I mean, they're talented. They have some really good ball players. That running back's very very good. Um, the quarterback's good. Got some good skill receivers on the edge. They play good defense. Um, they play extremely hard. Um, you can see their efforts there. Yeah, um, I mean, new head coach, so I mean, changing the culture, getting used to the way he does things. They're only going to get better throughout the year. So we got to be ready with our A game on Saturday. Right. I was just going to ask you, like, what's your biggest fear going into this game? Biggest fear going into this game? And I hate is, to use the word fear, but just something that concerns you a bit. Well, I mean, as a coach is, are you focused and ready to play? Um, playing Saturday day. I mean, Friday. we're very used to our Friday night routine. Yeah, I was going to get to um, that in a minute, but go We ahead. haven't played many day games in, since I've been there. So making sure that we keep our schedule, keep our, our preparation the same, and playing that Saturday afternoon, I mean, starts at noon, so it's not like real early in the morning, but still, just playing a different part of the day. I mean, we're just so used to playing Friday nights. Exactly. Uh, what I know about them, I know they're a little young, and, you know, they have a new coach who's no stranger to anybody, Kemp Carr. Correct. Uh, I know I know they haven't won a game yet, but I know Kemp very well. He's a friend of mine, and one of the most uh, – tenacious coaches. Kemp, I hope you're out there listening, buddy. I'm giving you a free plug here. <laughs> uh, when it comes to football and, and in life, I mean, Kemp is a very tenacious person. He's a go-getter. He's very positive. He's going to bring it. I can tell you that. 
Yes. And he's going to have these kids following him and they're going to bring it. And I know, you know, it's early in the season. They haven't, you know, done very well yet. And I use the word yet because I know sooner or later things are going to start clicking for them, even if not this season. And uh, he will have them ready. Um, I was going to say, how do, the, the whole Saturday thing, how, how do you feel about playing Saturday in, in general, aside from the disruption in routine? And does that give them any advantage, you think? Well, I mean, as a football coach, you're very structured. You're very oriented with your structure. So, like, we're very used to our Monday through Friday routine. Saturday mornings is usually our film day, our lift day, you see the trainer day. So, yeah, I mean, I'm always fearful that, hey, they're used to the schedule. We're not. But, again, on the other hand, we'll play football whenever you want to play football. So, exactly. um, again, I mean, we we're gonna, we structure our week very similar to our, to our normal week. Um, that way our kids get the same preparation as always. Um, we'll bring the kids at the same time. We'll follow the same pregame routine that we would do on any day of the week. So by doing those things, um, and again, I think, I mean, our kids, our kids are, are see the big picture. They understand we got to get better every week and Hey, whatever you play, you got to play. Absolutely. And I know a week from now, <clears throat> I don't want to jump too far ahead. You're hitting the balls, bro. So this could be, uh, a nice tune up. Not only when I say tune up, I mean, they're a Saturday game as well. This can get you used to this could get you used to the bigger game in a week. Well, right now, Salem is our biggest game of the week, but I will right. say this when the schedule came okay. out yeah. and I saw that we played Saturday back to back as a coach who likes to be structured. I like that that way. We're yeah, not playing one Saturday, three Fridays, another Saturday. So at least this week is we have two weeks in a row of doing the same thing. Absolutely. Now, what do you guys do for Friday night? Do you have practice or a walkthrough or pizza party? What's the. Well, so basically what we did this week was we made Tuesday or Monday. Tomorrow's going to be our Tuesday. Gotcha. So Friday will be our Thursday structured walkthrough. So gotcha. okay. the, what we did was we brought the kids on Saturday because um, there's no bye weeks anymore. So right. we gave them Monday off, yesterday off, to just let them get one day in the middle of the season off. Sure. It's kind of like the middle of the season for us. Yeah. And then we'll do our four-day prep like we normally do. So today was like our Monday and then so forth. So right. that way we're preparing the same way. Right, great. So you know they have a new field. They're no longer the Walnut Street field. They have They're a very new. nice field. I can even go on film. I've heard. I haven't seen it yet. I'm sure at some point I'll get out there. Um, Mike, moving on to um, you know, some other things in Group One. Any uh, surprises? You know, you've got four games in. It's it's nowhere near playoff time yet. But as things start to develop, the horses in the race start to uh, take their spot. Any team surprising you right now? Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, like, like I said, I'm so focused in my narrow circle of things for us preparing week to week. But looking outside in, I mean, what's town playing very well? They got a yeah. big win this week against Woodbury. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. I mean, I, I mean, group one is wide open in my belief. I mean, I know you got class bro on top and stuff like that. And the expectations people might give us, but like, we just got to worry about one to, um, week to week. I mean, of course, such a week to, football is such a week to week thing. I mean, like who's ever, who's the better team that week. Right. Right. I mean, and I'm looking at things. What's interesting to me. Okay. You know, you had, you guys in Glassboro were, you know, preseason favors. Woodstown was supposed to be rebuilding with a young team. They look awesome. Paulsboro, I uh, did not hear great things about them in the offseason. They looked really good, almost under one point away from being undefeated. So there's a lot of surprises, along with you guys and Glassboro. The team that's got my attention is Kip Cooper. They're 3-1. and one. They're, I believe, in the top third of the Group 1 power points. I don't know much about them. Um, Your guess would be as good as mine. I mean, like, honestly, like, <laughs> I mean, outside of seeing scores and stuff like that, I mean, like, as a football coach, I mean, I know you're on a different end of things. Sure. But, like, sure. I mean, hey, great for them. Kids have another avenue to play. And I think, sure. I mean, again, group one's very competitive. I don't think people give group one the credit it should receive. It's very competitive football. It always, it's funny. It always is. And some of the better, I know it doesn't get the attention. I know a lot of years, some of the better games I've seen have been in group one. And, uh, you know, one time, remember, it was dominated by one or two teams. It is wide open now. And uh, it's, what, it's what I like about that. And then you have, like I said, new team, you have team Kip that, you know, three and one. We don't know where they're going, but it's interesting. Uh, another thing, getting back to the whole Saturday thing, this is another good warm up. A lot of group ones play on Saturday in the playoffs. Could be another, you know, it could help you get used to that for down the road as well. Oh, absolutely. We could take our experience from here and apply it if we had a, if we end up playing a road Saturday game. Yeah, because I mean, who knows? We don't know where everything's going to end no, up. No, we're 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 way away from that. Yeah, but we'll be talking about that as the days come. Mike, uh, anything else you want to add tonight? No, thanks, Joe. I appreciate well, it. Well, I mean, look, real quick before you go. Yes. I gotta, I'm going in areas you never, you know, you're not maybe paying too much attention to. I want to get to some big games this week. 
and there's two that really have my attention, and I'm sure you know what they are. You have uh, the, the consensus, number one and number two teams, Winslow and Millville, and you have the consensus three and four, St. Augustine, hosting mainland. Pretty good football. That's all I'm going to say. There will be two outstanding games. I say the same thing, and uh, that's, that's going to be tough to predict. That's yeah, it. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, definitely not me. I'm not going to throw any predictions out well, there. I mean, I, I, I'm going to tell you who, games. I'm going to tell you who wins. It's the fans that go to those games. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> They're the the neutral fans. That is not the fans that are losing team. They're not going to be happy. But I'd say if you're a neutral fan, man, this is uh, you got two places to be this weekend. Amongst some other really good games. Mike, I want to say thanks again for coming on the show. Um, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, Joe Carollo from Carollo's Corner at itsallaboutscores.com. Mike, we'll uh, talk to you next week as you get ready for Paulsboro. All right. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate no it. Problem, Mike, have a great night. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.